Hey everyone, it's Not of St. Traft. Welcome back to the Idiot Brewery. This is episode 21. Guys, we can legally drink now. In yeah, but the I have United diabetes, hey. so I can't. Well, hey, Austin. Fair, I guess. <laughs> hey, Austin. What? What's 9 plus 10? 19? No, it's 21. Exactly. No, it's yeah, not. he gets it. Oh, man. Old Vine <laughs> references. I'm so glad we're able to do this now. Hey, so uh, I'm joined by my normal co hosts, Next Door Lolly. And Noodle, your podcast is now a noodle. And Ashes of an Empire. However, I've also got a guest star today instead of the Grolin because uh, he's had a rough day. Uh, we have, we um, have Renji hanging out again. Uh, it's been a while since he's hung out in, in chat, so uh, we're going to hey, what's like up? do some stuff with three? that. Three or two? Uh, no, no, no. You were episode... It was episode eight or nine. Whatever the Christmas special was, that's the one oh, you were okay. in. Oh, you're right, right, right. It was yeah. Glimpse the great. Unthinkable. Very not good magic card. But the the deck I'm presenting card. actually has that card in it. So Stop. I'm not sure what you think it is. Stop. Wait, isn't it... Isn't Glimpse the Unthinkable just a better Boros charm? You're not... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you think about it like that, Boros sure. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, whatever. All know. right, so we're gonna it, just jump into the podcast we're, here. We're so gonna dive right to... in. I'll I'll kick things off. Let's just okay. jump into it, okay? Let's just dive right dive in. Right Let's right dive in. right in. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, you like flicker effects? Mm-hmm. Who are you? Cool. Well, unfortunately, Standard doesn't have any good flicker enablers, but that didn't stop me. We're gonna be building. Well, I build. We're not gonna be building. I'll be building and presenting blue white flicker in standard um in standard so essentially the point of the deck is you've got some all right etb effects that you can flicker with the two flicker cards that are in standard right now the main ones um just a car's portal which is one in a white instant exile creature you control then return flicker it um it gains first strike until end of turn and then siren's ruse which is one in a blue instant does the same thing but if it was a pirate draw card the pirate part doesn't matter in this deck wait Sorry couldn't you play um what uh what's that card it's like two in a blue exile a permanent and then that that player may cast it without paying its mana cost i mean you could speed. oh the one that goes the that combos with uh the wizard from dominaria yeah oh um release shoot, to the wind release to the yeah, wind yeah, yeah that's right See, that, that's, that's that basically just a flicker yeah it See, is you could do that you could do that but why um but the main thing is that the flicker if you exile the creature, you have to be able to cast it during your turn, unless it has flash. Um, you actually get a new flicker effect with this for this deck in in uh, War as well, right? The Teferi yes, one. Yes, the Teferi one, which is one in a blue. Um, flicker it, flicker a non-land permanent. If it's a creature, it come. It, you have to control it. I think it's if any it's permanent. If it's a creature, isn't it has it? a plus one, plus one. No, it's. I think it's non-land permanent. I do not remember, but I remember that it gets a plus one, plus one counter if it's a it's creature. A creature. Which is not too bad. Also, just run Augur of Bolas in this deck now. The card we're, well, the card we're referring to is Teferi's Time Twist. It's one in a blue. It, it is, is a permanent. Exile target permanent you control and then return it to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. And then it gets a plus one, plus one counter if it's a creature. It costs one in a blue? One in a blue. Yes. Pretty good, actually. Mm-hmm. That's, like, really, really solid. It's not too bad Especially at all. Especially for flicker uh, effects. Oh, so yeah. So you're saying if you, uh, if you have a blue based bounce land and an amulet of figure on the field <sighs> all right let's go keep on going. i don't understand where you're going you just you net neutral mana okay except and, you're down a land on the field and you're down a card in a hand card in your hand it's like yeah. a minus two. It's literally two for one. No, of no, you're not. You're not down Absolute a card in value. your hand. You're just down a, a land on the battlefield because that land that's on the battlefield goes to your hand. <laughs> anyway, whatever. So you're um, not down a card. I all guess. Right. Yeah, sure. So, anyways, um, this deck consists of some all right ETB effects. Um, we've got we've got Exclusion Mage, uh, two and a blue Human Wizard from Core 19 ETB, bounce a creature uh, an opponent controls to its owner's hand. Um, we've got three inspiring clerics, two in a white, three, two, ETB gain four. We've got um, six mythics in our top slots here. We've got four angel of grace, which is a five, four for three and double white with flash and flying. It's an angel if you couldn't tell. Um, ETB until end of turn. Um, damage that would reduce your life total less than one reduces to one, kind of like angel's grace. A little bit of a nerfed angel's grace of sorts. And then you can also pay four double white exile from your graveyard and your life total becomes ten. So that's not bad. 
And then we have two Dream Eaters in the deck. Um, four, three for four, double blue, flash, flying. Um, Nightmare Sphinx, of course. Uh, ETB, Surveil, four. When you do oh, return target, non-land, uh, bounce a non-land permanent opponent has to its owner's hand. So that's not too bad either. So all of these targets are pretty good at um, being bounced. And the last creature is Sun Cleanser. It actually runs four Sun Cleansers. Um... Sun Cleanser is one in a white ETB. Choose one. You can remove all counters from a creature, and it can't have counters put on it for as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. Or target opponent loses all counters, and that player can't get counters as long as Sun Cleanser is on the battlefield. Now, the second part isn't the most relevant right now, I'd say. The first part is what we're doing here because there's a couple things it can do. Uh, the most important thing it can do is it can sh it can just straight up kill a Hydroid Crassus for two mana, which is pretty all right, and it leaves a 1-4 body behind. Um, another thing it can do is you can make it so that Wild Growth Walker um, cannot get any more counters. You can remove, reset a Wild Growth Walker and it can't get any more counters on it, which is pretty all right. Um, also having a 1-4 body is good. And the fact that you can flicker it if you need to deal with things like multiple Krasis is very nice. Krasis. The ability to f Krasis, yes. Um, so those are the creatures. I've gone over most of the spells, but we also run two Disdainful Strokes, two Syncopates, and a Spell Pierce. Sort of in a tempo-y way. Um, enchantments, we actually have seven enchantments. We have four seal aways to get rid of those annoying attackers. Um, the one in a white enchantment with flash, ETB, exile tap creature until it leaves. An opponent controls, not your own. Um, last but not least, a card that most people don't agree with. It's a very controversial choice between like one person and me. Um, Dovin's Acuity. Um, which is also known as information campaign. For one, one blue and one white, it's enchantment, ETB, gain two life, draw a card. Whenever you've cast an instant spell during your main phase, you can return it to your hand. And essentially how that can work, campaign. yes. And essentially how that can work is if you flicker a card during your main phase, um, for example, if you need to get rid of a creature, maybe you need to stabilize yourself with a little bit of life, or if you're just bouncing sun or flickering sun cleanser to get rid of something, if you flicker it in your main phase, you can bounce Dovin's Acuity back to your hand and replay it, which is pretty nice. Um, it's not going to win a uh, GP, sorry, Magic Fest, um, but... <laughs> you were so ready SCG for that. Open. It was so funny. Just say SCG <laughs> Open. Yeah, SCG yeah, Open. It won't, win, it won't win an SCG Open, but, you know, it's actually pretty fun. I've had fun with it when I've played it. It also runs Azor the Lawbringer in the sideboard. Imagine flickering Azor, Azor every turn so your opponent can't cast instants or sorceries ever. I, I really like Azor. I think that card's really cool. Oh, yeah. Gonna be honest. Uh, very, unfortunately, very a rant about Ravenous Chupacabra uh, destroyed it. I mean, that's fair, I guess. Ravenous Chupacabra destroys Azor the Lawbringer with facts and knowledge. <laughs> but uh, other than that, cyborg is pretty standard. Next creature. Got some negates. <laughs> got some sorcerer spyglass. Got a couple shield mares for the mono red matchup. The two, three for one double Ooh, white shield mare. horse can't be blocked by red creatures. ETB or becomes the target of a spell or ability. Game three. Um, your opponent controls. Um, two settle the wreckages. Two shalies again for some uh, burn shenanigans. Why would you do that? I know, right? And Shalai's a lyra dawnbringer as well as Azor. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it'll win an SCG Open, but it is a pretty fun deck when you just want to sit back and play some casual magic. Also, very cheap. Um, actually, fairly cheap to build on Arena, too. In the main deck, there are only six Mythics, and there's only eight rares. So, those MTG Arena players, wow. best of one. This will You'll love this. Absolutely best of wet. One. They're. <laughs> They're dripping. <laughs> oh my. From the mouth, they're salivating. Please they're salivating. Yeah. They're salivating. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, no. And then, of course, if you wanted to bring it to best of three, you only need to commit two mythics and six rares to it. And the rest is just commons and uncommons, honestly. So it's like this can be built in arena really cheaply. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, that is blue white flicker in standard. In I like standard. it. It seems like pretty it's sweet. Spicy. I like how you're just like playing all these cards that just aren't good on their own, and then just become really good when mixed. They become with a like... lot better when you can flicker them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just generates a lot of incidental value being able to play the tempo game with Exclusion Mage and uh, stabilize mm -hmm. yourself with Cleric. Um, this might need to be a little updated because it's not. Uh, 
it has it was made during about week two or three standard of Ravnica Allegiance, so maybe it needs to be updated a little. But honestly, this is probably fine. You could yeah. probably just go with this and call it a day. Right. I like it. That's kind of dumb, but Sweet. I like it. It's I mean, I really fun. like flicker effects. So you like flicker wisp, Boston? Oh yeah. I not just flicker wisp. I mean, flicker wisp is great, but restoration angel is just like in my top top cards of all time. It's great. And Eldrazi so. Displacer is just fun. Eldrazi Displacer is very fun. That is correct. Very good with Spellqueller. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, who else wants to go next? Or who I wants to go I next? Will. You want to go next? Sure. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Do mm. your thing. All right. So this is a modern deck. This isn't a standard deck. Um. It revolves a lot heavily around artifacts, and I think Cole will really like this deck. Oh, I love me some artifacts. So, y'all know the Were Prison deck, right? Unfortunately. A little too well. Imagine, imagine for me a minute. So, the Were Prison deck has some win cons, but they all died of Blood Moon. Why would you want to play those win cons? So instead, I don't, I don't think we're gonna. Excuse me, I don't think Psy but, dies to Blood Moon. But size in the sideboard. And the sideboard. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so I thought to myself, how can we make a word prison ha have a better win con? So I was looking at I was looking at some artifacts that we could possibly use, and I came across this six drop artifact from Conflux. Austin, do you know what this card is? Wait, um six drop artifact from Conflux? Yeah. Um, is it, oh, what's the name of it? Is it like Pillar of Al Alara or whatever? It is Obelisk of Alara. Obelisk of Alara, I was so Obelisk close. Obelisk of Alara, six drop artifact. You can pay one in a white, tap it, gain five life. One in a blue, tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. One in a black, tap it, target creature gets minus two, minus two till end of turn. One in a red, tap it, deals three damage to target player. Or one in a green tap it, target creature gets plus four, plus four till end of turn. Hmm. Interesting. So you play It only this, does everything. You, it only does everything. Um you play you play Obelisk of Alara, and then you also play like a bunch of like the the prison stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But you also play things like Voltaic Key to un to keep untapping Obelisk of Alara, and you play Tezzeret the Seeker, three of in the main board to like untap a bunch of your artifacts mm -hmm. and you might be asking yourself but how are you casting a six mana artifact how are we casting a six mana artifact aiden we're well not. here's the thing we're playing we're worrying we're playing... into it <laughs> no we're not there are no zero word of inventions in this deck. oh unplayable oh god this is how we do it we we're playing every signet that taps for blue mana Ooh. we're playing so okay. many signets and Signets can get even better with Tezzeret and Voltaic Key. I mean, yeah, that's true. Because they just tap for an extra mana. Yeah. So we're just okay. trying as hard as we can to ramp out Obelisk, have all these uh, all these lock pieces, Obelisk of Alara, both controlling the field, uh, controlling your hand, controlling your life total against burn, and killing your opponent. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. And you could you could probably play War in this deck. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> it gets that really stupid artifact into play. <laughs> it does. And that artifact is um, really dumb and really powerful. I yeah, mean, it, and then it, one, it has one gone into card. more than one of my commander decks. I can tell you that much. It's a it's a fun card. It is very fun. Um, and then one one spicy inclusion that I really like in this deck is I run one of Azor's Gateway in the main board. Which Azor's Gateway is a two-drop legendary artifact. You tap, you you uh, you pay one, tap it, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand. If cards with five or more different converted mana costs are exiled under Azor's Gateway, you gain five life, untap it, and transform it. And then the flip side says, add X, tap it, add X mana to your mana pool of any one color where X is your life total. Hmm. So it's just like another way that you can ramp, and it also like keeps getting untapped by like voltaic keys and tezzeret the seekers and you have so many like ranging uh mana drops that it's just pretty easy to flip it sure i like that it. seems fun i like yeah. it i saw obelisk of alara and i'm like man 
Cart's I mean, hot. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I, I really like the promo artwork for it. It looks really good. The promo artwork is the cheapest. Is it really? Yeah. Interesting. Huh. Alright, Cole, know. do you want to go next, or do you want me to go next? Uh, 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 I have a uh, very spicy... Yeah, I know. That's why I was... Oh, do you want to go last, then? Just to... Yeah, I, I can go last. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You can go crazy. All right, so uh, basically the, the beginning of this deck was Cryptic Command, Polygon's Command, Snapcaster Mage. And then I just kind of oh, no. went from there. Um, oh, no. And so where I'm at now is sort of this really cool and interesting um, Grixis midrange shell that uh, I piloted last week at FNM. And I'm going to be playing a little bit further going forward just because I actually think this deck is pretty solid and actually good and viable, which um, kind of surprises both myself as I did not really expect and that when I people. first built it, but also other people as, you know, me playing Grixis isn't necessarily a common thing. The Grixis colors sure are kind isn't. of... Are kind of reserved. Well, I mean, I play like mid range, like Jund and stuff, but right. Um, but you don't usually play Grixis. Yeah, Grixis is kind of reserved when I was playing either Grixis Death Shadow, or when I. Um, oh, you never played Grixis Death Shadow. I mean, I did quite you a did. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I just had it and never really played it a lot. I just did at one point play quite a bit of it. Um, but anyway, the. Uh, the, other, the only other time that I really played Grixis was either some stupid four-color deck, um, which was just me kind of screwing around with mid-range cards, or when I was piloting uh, our friend Garrett's Grixis Dragons deck, which I played mostly on Mikko and did really, really poorly with because I don't know that deck very well. Um, but we, uh, I finally sat down and I built this list and... Honestly, a lot of these cards that I'm going to read off, you are probably going to know what they do. Uh, they're all just really solid and good cards that see play in modern. And oh. a lot of these cards make up what I think to be an actually pretty viable mid-range deck. Um, viable enough to the point where working on it, I think, is going to be very, very fun. So, hey, Austin. What, what's that? If I, don't, if I don't know a card, can I just uh, ask you what it is as you're going? Sure, that works. Cool. Hey, Austin, what's Lightning Bolt? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this deck sees... I mean, you're going to see a lot of the similarities between this and other mid-range decks. Um, for example, like Aiden said, Lightning Bolt, right? Um, you also play Fatal Push. Uh, you play Terminate. They're, they're all just your kind of straightforward removal spells that a lot of mid-range decks are playing right now, especially the red-black ones, obviously. Good card. Um... Currently, I'm gonna try. I'm trying out a single Bedevil, um, and if you don't know Bedevil, this one's kind of interesting. But it's black, black, red for an instant. Uh, it's from Ravnica Allegiance. It's destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. So it's like Dreadbor, except at instant speed for one extra mana, and also right. can randomly hit an artifact. Dreadbor, but it's on Yeehaw. Yeah, Bedevil is really sweet. The artwork is very good. Well, I actually saw a red-black prison deck that was running Bedevil, and I thought that was kind of sweet. Bedevil's a good card. I, I think yeah. it, it uh, a lot of people were hyped about it, but then it got, like, I don't know, kind of pushed under the radar just because it was three mana. I think it'll mana, be better but... in well, war. Think... Yeah, maybe. Just because think... there's 36 Planeswalkers that are going to be running around. <laughs> right. So. I think in, in, uh, in modern, at least, three mana is a lot to ask for for a removal spell. That's true. Um, the one thing that I good, the one thing I really like about Bedevil, and I think the one reason why I'm playing it, it a bit also more, hits were, it hits the War decks. Yeah, and yeah. It's, and it's like a, it's a Swiss yes, Army knife. Kolagon's command also does that. But the thing is, is that Bedevil is one of those cards that can stay in the main board, that can kill anything, and it doesn't have to worry about only being able to deal two damage. But it's also viable against the War decks. So it kind of has the versatility there, and I think that's where it's really it, it kind of excels. Is there a matchup where where um um Bedevil is just not good? Like there's absolutely nothing to hit. Um maybe I could see something. Mono I could white see enchantments. Like, yeah. Well, like mono white enchantments or bogles, 
I think Bogles is yeah. probably a pretty safe one, honestly. Although, yeah. I mean, obviously it can still hit things in Bogles too, right? Of course, Beard Answers and stuff. But I think that, like, Bogles is probably the one deck Bedevil definitely comes out in. Um, or one matchup, I should say. One of um, enchantments literally has nothing for you to hit. With that card, yeah. Well, honestly, this deck probably can't handle Mono White enchantments. It, uh doesn't i mean your grixis right grixis just can't handle enchantments that's kind of their thing so you know whatever uh, um as far as uh th that's kind of most of the instance i i talked about cryptic command and Colagon's command already um God. as far as How greedy is your mana base uh it's actually not as hard as you'd think um because the deck is mostly blue black you hitting three blue for cryptic command is a lot easier than you'd think uh, and you're Are you're you very heavy black, and your red is literally for one terminate, one bedevil, two K command, two bolt, uh, and then one uh, creature that's red, and that's it. And it's really really light on the red splash, which is nice. Um, as far as hand attack spells go, you have your normal four Inquisition, two Thoughtseize, which is pretty standard and stock for mid range decks. But you also have three mainboard collector brutality, uh, because that card's stupid and good. Um, you have, uh, and that's kind of everything as far as hand attack goes. Um, you sit on four Lily of the Veils. You have two search for Azcantas, uh, and then your creature suite. I already mentioned Snapcaster Mage. You have four Dark Confidants, um, which. People, I think one, a couple people on uh, last Friday had asked me, why are you playing Dark Confidant with Search for Escanta? Like, they just kind of do the same thing. Um, no, they're very good together. To which I replied, yeah, yeah those cards are really good together um, because you can effectively, you're effectively seeing three cards with both of them. Yeah. And you can use Search for Escanta to kind of choose what you're your uh dark confidants you know gonna reveal I like i don't want to take three here yeah reveal exactly land. like <laughs> it, it's just yep. so crazy um and then uh you play uh your top end is two four drop creatures which is one olivia valderin which is the red oh one my god because that card is stupid um and very very strong and you might not know olivia uh from jun's kind of older days two black red for a three three flying creature legendary vampire um, and you might think, four mana for a 3-3, three, three, that's not very good. Well, she has a couple of activated abilities. She has one in a red, deal one damage to another target creature. It becomes a vampire in addition to its other types forever. That That is very key. Uh, and also, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on Olivia Valderin. So she can grow, she can slowly kill and sort of destroy token decks and stuff. Uh, I used to play her in Jund against the Mardu Pyromancer matchup because it absolutely walked all over that matchup, and it was a ton of fun. Uh, her last ability, which I actually got our good, good friend Dan at uh, FNM last week with, um, which he completely forgot that I had five mana open, and the turn previously I had pinged his treetop village just to make my Olivia bigger, uh, and then I used her last ability which is three black black gain control of target vampire for as long as you control olivia valderin three top village is a vampire when you ping it <laughs> with her ability <laughs> that was a lot of Everything's fun a, vampire when you ping. <laughs> a bogle could be a vampire if you play it right. if you could ping it yeah a bogle could a bogle can be a vampire if you use soren's my new soren's minus x on it i mean technically correct yes yeah but yeah, and then the uh, the other four drop creature is Kalidus Trader of Get, which uh, oh, is wow. also just a very good card. Very good against Burn. Um, very very good against Dredge, and it's pretty okay against Phoenix, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's kind of your main creature suite, as well as three Creeping Tar Pits, uh, Mainland for blue and a black, and then for one blue black, uh, it can become a three two that's unblockable. That's pretty strong. Um, and the the sideboard is just very stock as well as far as Grixis colors. There really isn't anything super spicy. Uh, except you might have heard me mention earlier that I don't like fighting against Bogles because I can't deal with enchantments. Um, so I have one spicy inclusion right now 
that I think is going to make Bogle's players unhappy. Uh, oh, no. With the coming of war, um, I'm oh, actually no. going to have access to Liliana's triumph, so I'm not going to care oh, too no. much. I think, I think Bogle's <laughs> is just dying as soon oh. as that card oh, is released. Yeah. Correct. I don't, think, um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. You're just going to play another Dryad Arbor, probably. <laughs> Gotta I mean, get that second you, one. Not only can you do that, there's been edict effects around. Now we just have to prepare for our well, four more. Yeah, not, but this is not, an edict effect that ones. gets around ley line. Yeah, know, that's, that's what matters. Um, <laughs> no, in my scary. in my sideboard right now, uh, I have four total like wrath type effects. Um, I have two engineered explosives. I have one damnation, and then I've got one evacuation. Stop. <laughs> Oh, right yes. now. Which is a very good card. <laughs> Especially why against you, Why are you playing Bogles. a five mana spell in your Bob deck? Well, I'm going to be playing the five mana Nicol Bolas when, with Bob. Oh my god. <laughs> the same reason Dan ran a greater Gargadon as Jun deck. Hey, Evacuation is a good card. Okay? You're Don't. Wrong. It is a Magic the Gathering card. It is an instant it speed is. board wrap. So, to clarify for those listening uh, on CastBox or anything like wipe. that... It's three blue blue for an instant. Return all creatures to their owner's hand. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> you you want to know how you get around that? What's that? Counter spell. I mean, sure, but <laughs> Bogles isn't playing that, so. They should. Mm, probably not. <laughs> Although, if Bogles players played it's, that, then I could DQ blue, them for playing counter spell. It's blue blue enchant target creature. Uh, you can sack it to counter target spell. I'd rather they didn't ever print that card, to be fair. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, Grixis Midrange. I don't think there's anything. I I'm going to be working on this list going out, uh, forward in the future because I really like it. And I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's a deck of the decks that I've ever presented on this podcast. I think it's the one that has the most legs going forward, I think. Um, outside of maybe the Safi combo deck. I think the Safi combo is really solid too, but... This deck is just really, really fun. It's sweet. Um, I get to play Grixis Colors, so what's not to love? So, you know, all that yeah. jazz. But uh, outside of that, yeah, I'm, I think that's sweet. everything for me. If, Cole, you want to go ahead and jump on your deck. All right, deck. so who likes four-colored modern decks? Oh, my I love God, four I love colors. Four. All right, wait, wait a minute, minute. hold wait on, a minute. what happened? What, what's the color combination? <laughs> everything but red. What? Non-red? Yep, no red. Is that man. Dune? Dune? There's no faith in no, loading. Your. There's no art light phoenix. There's none of that shenanigans. There are four Tarmogoyfs, four to Pteramanders, and four Glimpsy Unthinkables in this deck. What is happening? I don't happening? know if you see where I'm going with this. Are you self milling? You are self milling. So this deck, running through the deck list, runs four like removal and etc. Two assassins trophies, two fatal pushes, one Liliana's triumph, four ops, three path to exiles. And for creatures, you run a pair of Hedron Crabs, four Pteramancers, and four Tarmogoyfs, because you want to mill yourself. Oh, my God. And oh, for spot removal, you this want... Deck. So, just in case for spot removal, you have two Liliana the Last Hopes in your main board, and two Ashiox Nightmare Weaver. Oh, my God. Because if milling yourself doesn't work out, you mill them and take their things. Then for Wait sorcerers, you have a basic disc... What? Are you, are you playing a Bitter Blossom to get the final, um... The final, uh... Uh, type for Tarmogoyf. I I thought about it. It's 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 right now. Liliana's triumphs in there, but I literally thought about playing a pair of Bitter Blossoms to finish up Goyf. Yes. But so you run four glimpses, three Inquisitions, two Seer Visions, and two Thought Seizes. Now <laughs> you'll ever just saying, y'all ever just Inquisition hey, yourself to give Tarmogoyf <laughs> a boost. I I actually so, I've just, actually done that uh, to get lethal against uh, my opponent that had a Leyline of the or Leyline of uh, Sanctity in play. I oh I God. double Thought Seized oh. myself to get a Lily and another creature in the bin and then kill them with a lethal Goyf. <laughs> That's spicy. <laughs> But, but, but hearing this deck list, you think, well, what are you going to do game two when they have graveyard hate? So what you do is you take out all your Pteramanders, you take all the Goyves, you don't need that crap. You're right. You bring in four Extirpates, three Rested Pieces, four Surgical Extractions, and then my favorite Planeswalker, four Kayas. So you're just, you're just playing so, mill? No, no, you can you, you can that, sideboard oh, you transform your sideboarding, sideboarding into, into mill. You're sideboarding into exile. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's what they're going to bring in. So now they have dead cards that are accelerating you. I mean, I guess that works. <laughs> it's not... It's fun. I've, I've played I mean, this I on Mitko Kaya. once and confused the crap out of it isn't Phoenix player. I mean, Kaya, <laughs> Kaya is very good. Sometimes you can cast a Kaya into a chalice on three and your opponent doesn't see it. <laughs> Oh, we should do a quick, uh, <coughs> quick not humble brag. Do you guys want to do that? Oh, oh yeah. So at this past oh, I weekend, we we're gonna do that at the end. So well, we can do it now. Whatever. Um, so uh, w I've, like I said earlier, we live in the Midwest, and in the Midwest, there's a big chain of uh, events that are going around. Some sort of like circuit. Oh, uh, with a score. Circuit. It's actually yeah. relatively new. It's very very cool. Um, but anyway, the. Uh, the people that are running it or whatever, they just did a team non-unified modern event. And both Jack, Aiden, and myself uh, played, um, you know, the team non-unified modern this weekend and top aided, which was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. I, I was playing um, Eldrazi in Taxes. Mm -hmm. And like aforementioned, I cast a Kaya into a chalice on three uh assuming my opponent would see it and then i would concede to which point he did not i down ticked on the chalice uh and then proceeded to um play my flicker wisp get rid of his bridge and swing in for lethal so that was sweet i was probably <laughs> running the least exciting deck of the three i was running bogles now aiden was running humans and that sounds i also I, kind of standard but i played my second ever game of humans that day yeah. <laughs> he picked so unfortunately Renji here had an emergency, so he wasn't able to come to the team Which event. Is um saddening, but... Yeah, but you know, emergency. And Aiden didn't have some cards for burn that Renji was supposed to bring in, which fair enough, there was an emergency. So Aiden, um sorry, I just dosed him. Um wow. Skedaddle Skadoodle. I mean, <laughs> um uh, we all know his name. I've said it like sixteen thousand times. I don't believe you. Anyways, Tank Hands of Bushes Baked Beans decided to borrow a deck from another one of our friends. He borrowed humans. And yes, he doesn't play humans much. But he did very, I went, very well. I went 2-1-2 two, well. two in my matches. Or yeah. I guess, yeah. You drew with burn, right? That was the draw? Yeah. Yeah, that was a fun and then game. I, I, and then we, we drew hot. the last round. but And I was fortunate well, we, enough to we, go 5 yeah, we, two. we drew the last round mostly because we could draw into top 8. Yeah. So. Um, oh, yeah. no, I went 5-3-1-2, 4-1-2, 4 one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two. I lost four, my first two matches to Blood Moon um, <laughs> and then proceeded to do well after that. <laughs> Turns out Cheerios doesn't like Thalia. Oh, they don't. They really, really don't. No, they do not. So. But no, it was really fun. Um, I, I was personally very happy with the team. I was also happy with my own personal... Um, record. I thought I played really well, and I was happy about that. And I think everyone else did pretty well as well. I, I was think I'm Aiden, building who humans. once again. That was the second time. I was but very. Austin can tell him targets. I was very very happy with the way that the weekend turned out, with one exception. Uh, <laughs> I have. Far too much hubris. He learned the definition. I learned the definition of hubris. I worry uh, about hubris. <laughs> we You've were been warned. We, we took a draw into top eight. Um, I we then proceeded to go to a nearby gas station to get some drinks and snacks or whatever while we were I waiting for everyone else to finish. That yeah. Day. And on their way there, we talked about the magic card hubris and the definition of hubris and all that stuff. Uh, to which pr I proceeded to walk right into and then relearn the definition of when I sat down from a Tron opponent, who I was very excited to play against because I'm playing Death in Taxes, and proceeded to get, like, turn three Karned both games and die. So, it was Shakespearean. It, oh, God. I was so you know what? verbally excited for that matchup after my opponent went turn one Urza's mine. I was like, oh, let's dance. Let's do this. I was so ready. And then I just, like, died, like, so quickly. Sha you so know what? The good, <laughs> the good part about that, about those matches was that I won game one against War Prison. You sure I'm, did. We're oh all my still gosh. very surprised about that. Look, it's just like the old, it, it wow. just reminds me of the old Shakespearean um, story. Um, to quote Julius Caesar, um, A2, Karn Liberated. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Anyway, we can move past that uh renji <laughs> shout 
Uh, is that, uh, that is there anything else for your deck or no? Self. Um, not not entirely. It was more of a a, a deck where I had seen a, a list of like the Exile Kaya deck. I'm like, that seems like an interesting main board. It really was. And I kind of looked at my Soul Tide deck that I had had originally. That was you know let's mill the power of Goyf and stuff. I'm like, what if I just made this the main board and then just completely changed the deck on the side? <laughs> hmm. Transformational yeah, let's try it. And sideboard. I, I, I tried it on Mitgo and threw off quite a few people, especially when your players are like, oh, rest in peace, Leyline of the Void. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for and doing my job for me. <laughs> when when you play against the Is it Phoenix deck and you go like six turns with, six or seven turns without dying and they never ever see you or a surgical or anything like that, they don't expect when you extirpate rest in peace and surgical than the deck. <laughs> They sure in do game not. Three, they're like, I don't, I don't know. In game three, I just switched back to my original plan and won. Because <laughs> that's when they sign out all the all the graveyard yep. hate. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. Like, what, what do you do at that point? You go, all right, it's a shotgun 50 50 and what they're hoarding. <laughs> all right. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's move on to it's our fresh solid. brew segment then. So fresh brews, uh, if you don't know and you've never been around for it. The uh, basic idea of this is that each one of us is going to give another card to the rest of the group, and they have to build around it right on the spot. And it doesn't have to be like a perfect build build me a yes, whole 75, but it does have to be like a kind of rough estimate, rough draft of a deck, basically. So, uh, for example, I guess um, I'll go first this week, uh, and I would like you guys to build me a deck around a card called Ashling's Prerogative. I've heard of this card before. That's because I've talked about it a couple of times and I think it's hilarious. Ashling's Prerogative, one in a red, enchantment. As Ashling's, Ashling's Prerogative comes into play, choose odd or even, zero is even. Each creature with, ver with converted mana cost of the chosen number has haste. Each, com each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen, of the not, Without the chosen converted mana cost, comes into play tapped. So what I what All I right. had, what I had said is you put this on odd, right? Um, and then uh, your death Wild shadows and tribal. well, no, your death shadows and your Gurmag Anglers have haste, and everything else comes in tapped, like Tarmogoyf. Wild Nakadal tribal. Oh my god, that's called Zoo. Wild. Also, that also Austin's known as Zoo. Idea was very good. Well, right, um, but you can't play Tarmogoyf. Right, so and? Ha I would put this in a control deck, and that sounds stupid. But, so, I'd actually put this in a jank prison deck as pseudo chalice 6 through, or not 6, 5 through 8 for fun. Because it's not perfect chalice. Um, and it's not even... How is it's this good chalice at all? For creature this decks, because instead they come in tapped. It's not a chalice, right? But you can play it, and... It's a you can bring in it against creature decks, right? And you can really slow them down and just give yourself like a full um, turn against like a goblin guide. Okay, sure, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's <laughs> very good. I don't, but... I don't know if you want to bring this in against Burn, who has a literal eight <laughs> creatures. <laughs> but you can. They're all make one drops those, though. Enter, so tapped. You're right. You're right, and it's not even that great against humans. I know, it's kind of sad, right? Well, you put it on even, and then it stops a big chunk of their deck. No, I think you put, you it, put it on odd, odd to stop, oh, to stop Mantis Rider. Yeah. yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. That doesn't stop That doesn't Because, stop like, the, uh, Mantis Rider is the only thing that, image, that I think, matters coming in tapped or untapped. I think right? even is kind of the where you would want to name it. Or odd, I'm sorry, is where you'd want to name it with this, because um, the vast majority of modern decks usually consist of like one to three drops and so you catch both one and three drops with odd instead of the you know even with only being I two yeah. guys um, did you know if you if you bring this unless in you're against, against fish uh, fish you, you name even if you bring this in against a uh, devoted company their uh their vizier of remedies comes in tap i got it it sure does. <laughs> it does it does <laughs> so i've got and so it does so you the run walking this ballista. So you run this against, uh, so you play this, you name whatever the most prevalent um, creature card is, 
and then you slam a Sunblast Angel. What is oh, I see. Oh, so Sunblast Angel is like five four, or four double white. It's um, four, four white white, and when it comes into play, it destroys all tapped creatures. You did it. We solved it. We that. Well, couldn't you just cast Wrath of God? You could for far less mana. You could, but why? But why? <laughs> You're paying I don't know. eight I, mana for a Wrath of God. I think there's there's six, maybe something you can do five. with this, but like this card's just really interesting. But I don't think it's very good. So I think I I'd rather I'd... play Rhythm of the Wild. Probably. But you know, you didn't bring it up, and I think there's a way to make it work. I I'm think sure your idea something. from earlier was prob from an earlier episode. Make your was death shadows better ways to do it. Make your death shadows and Gurmag oh. anglers fast. Wild Nakadal Tribal. That's called Zoo You play all the good one drops, and you give them all haste. In a yeah, lot but, of the good one drops already have haste. Yes, I was gonna say. Yeah. Literally only Goblin Guide. <laughs> and Monastery Swift Spear. But you're not playing Monastery Swift Spear in a creature deck. Um. In Zoo, yeah, sometimes you do. Why? Because in Zoo, a lot of the... So the way that Zoo works is you play very efficient, cheap creatures, but you also play lots of removal spells so that they can get through blockers. Well, yeah, but this one isn't. I'm just saying that you... Okay, You're only well. playing one-drop creatures. All right. One-drop creature tribal one, one, a two-drop enchantment. Yeah, that makes them have haste. <laughs> yeah. I would just rather play Rhythm of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> but... But hear me out. Their opponent, your opponent's creatures, your opponent's Tarmogoyf enters the battlefield tapped. I mean, that's true. And then you can seal it away. Oh, yeah. See? It does have combo. <laughs> okay, let's please move on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. I've got one. I've got one. Okay. No, you don't. You're right. Um, Who likes heroic? Nobody. I, I actually cool. really like their heroic mechanic. You know, you know I played mono white heroics and popper for like a really long time. It, uh, Maro was actually asking about um, so on Twitter, I think yesterday or today or whatever, about like which of two mechanics he'd like to see brought, like we would like to see brought back. Uh, and heroic was one of them. Um, I don't actually remember what the other one was, which you know is unfortunate because that's the one that back. I voted for. But you want to know what mechanic? What's I that? See come back, Phyrexian mana. No, no. no. I want to see Gitaxian not. probe come back. No, I'd rather see no, Grape Shot. No. But Gitaxian probe would be fine in standard. <laughs> you say it's Jack, get see, on it. Jack, he wants Phyrexian mana. I, I just want Grape Shot. Storm, back, honestly, in standard. Storm and Dredge. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, back to heroic. Build me a deck around Anthusa, Setessin hero. Is this the one that makes like bears or something when you heroic her? Of sorts. She makes two twos. Uh, three green green legendary creature human warrior goes in the warrior's deck. <laughs> For a 4-5 <laughs> heroic, whenever you cast a spell that targets Enthusa, up to three target lands you control each become 2-2 two, two warrior creatures. Until still end of land. Turn. Oh, still she lands. makes lands into things. Oh. A little fancy. Alright. Alright. So, we're obviously Let's... killing your opponent with your lands. Right. Get wrong, now, monster. Okay. So you're playing this in the sideboard of Amulet Titan. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no sideboarding. Gotta put this you in play the this, main deck. You're replacing prime time with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know how I feel about that one. Um, huh. I'm trying to think. What's the best way to get, like... So you could just, like, play a prime time. What's a good, another good way to get, like, a whole bunch of lands on the battlefield? Time walk? So you, you ult a Nissa Ravi, Rav, Ravine? Ravane? Ravane. Okay, Ravane. and you go a get a bunch is a of cliff. elves. You... No, other one. What's the one that just grabs all the forests in your deck? Is it the one from M15? Nissa World Waker? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay, so you ult in Nissa World Waker, right? Okay. Okay. So you have, you have all your lands on the battlefield. And then sure. you cast four mutagenic growths tar targeting in Enthusa. And just hey, I don't mean to be this lands, guy, two twos. but uh, her minus seven already makes them four four elementals with But trample. you can make them two twos. <laughs> I, they are, <laughs> I guess they're That's warriors. You, so, you know what? Radiant, <laughs> so if you're radiant, 
I guess if you oh, have yeah. all the warrior you have Radiant lords Destinies out, too, the on, warrior but on don't Warrior. Work with the elementals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm just, <laughs> just. I'm just really <laughs> upset with pause, you right now. Settle in. Technically, right, you can but, also gut being, shot it four times. Being being completely serious, um, probably mono green mid range, where you just or uh, even like Stompy or something, where you just want to play like mutagenic growths and like um, like uh, combat tricks anyways. Sure. So you can just like mutagenic growth it and then swing for lethal. Okay, interesting, I guess. Alright. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Okay. We did it. I was it. just gonna put her in Grixis control, but whatever. Ugh. <laughs> 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 oh. Cannot be lava quilled. Relevant. Bring it back, wizard. It is. Alright, so that was Anthusa Satessa <laughs> is... Nero. Alright, let's move on, please. Oh man! All right, I have I have a card. Sure. Uh, do you? I don't think you do. I do. I want you guys to build me a deck around Tunnel Vision. Oh uh... my God! This card. <laughs> I love this Holy card. Holy moly! I have won many VDH games with this card. All right, but I want to see it be worked out with Modern. <laughs> Wait, I feel like we've talked about this card before. No, we have not. It, it has not been on a fresh bruise. I can tell you that much. Alright, Tunnel Vision. Five and a blue. Sorcery. Name a card. Target player reveals cards from the top of his or her library until the named card is revealed. If it is, that player puts the rest of the revealed cards into his or her graveyard and puts the named card on the bottom of his or her library. Otherwise, that player shuffles his or her library. So, manipulate the deck. So, there's a one of that you have at the bottom of your library with a lab man on the field. Play this. Wait Name a minute. the card. Draw the card. Draw another card. You win. Okay. So your deck is completely singleton. <laughs> <laughs> you... This is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it already. Your deck is one. completely singleton, except for four tunnel vision, four um, four co co uh, fourth co-host, fifth co-host. Sorry. <laughs> And four conjurers bobble. Uh, oh my god. Okay. Go I know on. where you're so going you with this, but so I'm not put, okay with it. You put whatever card you want on the bottom of your library with conjurers bobble. Draw a card. And then you name the card that you know is on the bottom of your deck. Flip your entire deck into the into the bin. Wait. Could this could this work with like four horsemen? You just flip all the Narcomoebas, except you don't. You don't have Dread Return. I mean, you could, I guess. You just don't have Dread Return. Yeah. Now, I want you to think. There is a counter spell that goes fairly well with this card. It's what called Hinder. Hinder puts it on the bottom, so you know what's on the bottom of their library. You can also Fate Seal them with either Spin Into Myth or Jace the Mind Sculptor. But but the thing is, is that, like, you don't know if they're playing more than one copy. We'll see. Then right. you play a card, like, you can, I mean, right now. I got it. I got it. Modern. You you play Surgical Extraction and then leave one copy in their deck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what I was going to do with it. <laughs> oh, my God. Surgical I just want to clarify for everyone listening that I hate everything about this. <laughs> I need to read a card real quick. I I've just I've lost <laughs> I've lost to Tunnel Vision multiple times in Commander, and I just yeah. it it holds a it's really a way unfun way. To, yeah, I don't like the card very much. I I don't like being on the receiving end of the card, but do I love casting the card? God yes. Okay, so I looked it up. Conjurer's Bobble does say from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Yeah. If it was if it was any graveyard, you could surgical the card in the graveyard, get rid of it, get rid of it in the deck, and then just conjurers bobble it. Yeah, that's true. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could. But it doesn't, sadly. Hold on. That's really funny, though. I mean, not really, but like it's funny still. Wait, what is this? All right, so is there anything else, now, then? Is that... No, that wasn't the last one, right? 
Aiden, you still have to go? Yeah, that was Yeah, me. I still have to go. Hold oh. on. What is this? But the Aiden, b b the Aiden, banishing stroke. If you want to play Miracles. Oh my god, no, stop. Actually, I think, I think that's the only command. No, no more. Alright, Aiden. <laughs> Wait, this card has one storm card in it. It's not even that good of a storm card. Oh no. How does this deck win? Aiden, please give us a card to build we've, around. We've lost Aiden. Aiden, give us oh, a card. Oh, you used Rolling Thunder. Okay, I, I I figured it out. All right, you guys like blue red spells that have X in the converted mana cost and are from Ravnica. Return to Ravnica. Um. Okay. Is it Epic Experiment? Build your deck around Epic Epic Experiment. Oh jeez. Epic Experiment. Oh god. So this card is ridiculous. I've... Um. <laughs> Epic, Actually, if I reach over epic right here, experiment. I yeah, epic, epic yeah. experiment. It's... This card's. I mean, it's good. Epic. Uh, so it's blue, red, and X. Exile the top X cards of your library. You may cast any number of instants and sorceries from those cards, uh, and and without paying their mana cost. With converted mana cost extra less. Or with converted mana cost extra less. Yeah, 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 you're right. There is an extra line of text there that I skipped over. Um, it's what you do. And also, Did they're you put in your graveyard, not on the bottom, if you don't cast them. Oh, they don't stay in exile? That's kind of good, I guess. No. Yeah. Yeah. So what you do is you play four of this in Storm. Mm, no. I mean, you don't, but... You could. I mean, you could, but, like, no. You need, you need, a, you need a sufficient <laughs> way to mana ramp into whatever it is you're trying to do. Actually, that does seem... That, that actually seems kind of hot. I mean, sure, I guess. It's just, like... I can't, I can't find the, wait, the, you play, um, some versions will play like this over, um, uh, Pass in Flames. So it's just like, yeet us for 15 It's, minutes. it's instead of, it, it, I guess it does technically get around, um, Graveyard Hate and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Which is technically pretty good. Although, no, it exiles them, right? So it doesn't even, it doesn't even... After you cast them. Like, yeah. Graft Digger's Cage doesn't matter? No, because... Yeah. Because yeah. You, it, they're exiled, and then you yeah. cast them. That's from pretty exile. cool. Yeah. I like that a lot, actually. Could, yeah, I think Storm would really be nice. kind of where you want to put this, even though I don't think it's very good in the Storm. Um, I'm gonna borrow Storm from Woodsy now and try... I think, I think I think you could do it in things. some... I think it could be, like, a really big payoff in Woodsy's uh, uh, Pyromancer Ascension deck. Because, oh like... God. When oh you when God. you amass a bunch of mana and then you just like cast this for like fourteen, it's like exile twenty eight cards from my library, cast a bunch of them, they all get copied with my ascension. Oh, God. oh my God! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Hold on. So Woodsy needs that right card, now. I think. Um, oh my oh God! Oh boy, that seems real hot and real dumb. <laughs> Also, talk about a top deck. Like, <laughs> you just like slam that. You're like, oh, okay. I guess this game is over. Oh, okay. Um, guess you'll die. I guess. I guess. Guess I kill you. <laughs> All right, we got this. There's no way epic experiment for tw for fourteen. You got All right, it. Well, game over. Sweet, I feel like on. it's just impossible to miss at that point. Oh, With, yeah. I mean, well, maybe I don't know. Oh my god, and he can't even like. There's no, um, you don't have to worry about your, uh, your deck size either. Because if you just kill yeah. them, you don't, you're not drawing the cards. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't draw them or anything. So you, you still live. Pretty oh solid. God, I God. Hot. It actually seems really neat. So, yeah, we found a good place for it, I think. I think it'd be actually Woodsy, call Woodsy. Get Woodsy out. in the call right now. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I, I already He's messaged sleeping. him saying, dude, you need to put this in your deck. Here's Epic Experiment. Here's the picture. Here's what it does. You need this. <laughs> All right, so that's been the Idiot Brewery for this week. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we have to talk about for that. Make sure to um, skedaddle your skadoodle. All right, that and sounds watch out for that pool really bad. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go through a couple things here at the end. I just wanted to remind everyone to make sure that they like, comment, share, subscribe on our YouTube channel, all that stuff. Hit um, that skedaddle we'd, we'd really appreciate it if you told your friends about us, got our name out there, use word of mouth, all that stuff to get our name out there. Uh, go to your friend group, go to your grandmother, say, hey, I really like these guys, you should listen your to them. Your grandmother. Um, 
<laughs> all that don't stuff. Don't push and her then, off a cliff. No, don't push her off a cliff. I don't I don't you make sure to push your friends. grandma off a cliff. No, don't yep, push your grandmother drop, off a cliff. She, off no, her. she's Fine, drop, probably a nice lady. Don't do that. The average that. grandma can be punted 20 meters when threatened. <laughs> <laughs> when punted 20 meters when thrown. I'm out. All right. <laughs> oh, my you can eat the grandmother an average of 20 meters. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, you know so in the, in the art of epic experiment, Ral is actually uh, trying to figure out a machine to punt a grandma more than 20 feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to let everyone know that uh, most, if not all, of our deck lists, except for the Grolins, because he, he's awful, are all on our tapped out account. So if you want to go check us out there, there's a link below us here and as well as below our cast box uh, and like i just mentioned cast box is our second platform for our um podcast so if you want to go listen to us and not actually see any of the card images or anything but just hear our voices you could totally do that over They're on cast box voices i i really like cast box i use it pretty much all the time at work it's a lot of fun um it's really nice the layout's really good all that stuff uh, i don't think there's anything else we have to talk about do you guys have anything um yes i do um since we've top eight at an event now, we're legit, so we know what we're talking about. Take everything we say with as much um, grains of salt as you would Jerry Thompson. All right. So and with that in be mind, for Garna the Flame Blooded. And with that in mind, we'd like to remind you to don't push your bird off a cliff, don't smack your grandmother, and we will see you next Saturday at noon. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Skedaddle, skadoodle. Your podcast is now a noodle. Professionals, don't worry about it.